I missed out on an incredible concert last night. Everyone is talking about how amazing it was. All my friends went on an epic vacation to a tropical paradise, and now I'm regretting not joining them. I can't believe I didn't invest in that cryptocurrency when it was at its lowest. Now everyone is making huge profits. Let's stop right here, shall we? Yes, FOMO or fear of missing out is something that we all experience, especially on social media. And obviously I'm not an exception. There have been moments where I was so stressed out because I missed out on an amazing opportunity, or so I thought, that I would cry, I would call my family, my friends, and I would just complain for hours. Until I learned a few interesting things that are now helping me to cope with FOMO a little bit better. And yes, I am still struggling with FOMO sometimes, and it's completely normal. Here is a little story for you to update your own. A few days ago, I realized that I have a fracture in my foot. Yep, that's crazy. One of the bones in my right foot is broken. And so naturally, because of that, I had to say no to a lot of plans. And obviously, at those moments, one of the things that people experience the most is FOMO. Because you start realizing that, oh my god, now that my foot is broken, the recovery is gonna take me a month. So for a whole month, I practically can't walk, which means that I can't do so many things that I absolutely enjoy doing, like walking, for example. It's as simple as that. So that's why right now what I'm trying to do is recognizing and accepting my own priorities. I know that I can't be everywhere and do everything, especially right now with my foot broken. I have to focus on what truly matters to me. And I know my example is probably an exception, at least I hope so. So you should try to define your own goals and priorities too. And when you see all the things that are important to you and that you have to do, this allows you to allocate your time properly. And this way helps you deal with FOMO at least a little bit. I also want you to remember that when you find yourself thinking that the grass is greener on the other side, remember that you are watering yours. So it is your responsibility to live your life the way you want to. If all you're doing is complaining that everyone else is doing amazing things, you're experiencing this FOMO and you're not doing anything about it, well, your grass is gonna die pretty soon. Instead of looking to the other side, over the fence to your neighbor's grass and thinking, oh my God, their life is so exciting. They're doing so many things and I'm not. Think about how you can do all of those amazing things, or at least the things that you truly want to. Because usually what happens is we see someone who is doing amazing things, right? We think their life is so exciting. But then when you sit down without your phone, without any social media, and just write down a list of your priorities and your goals, oftentimes your goals and priorities are a little bit different. At the very beginning of my video, I mentioned that cryptocurrency situation. Situation. And a few months ago, that was extremely relevant because a lot of people were afraid that they had missed out on an amazing opportunity. However, for a lot of people, when you write down your goals, you realize that financial security and stability is more important. So stop trying to chase other people's dreams. Define your dreams and start chasing after them. The second thing you can do and something that I have started doing probably a few years ago is limiting my social media consumption. You might be thinking that it's a little bit weird for me to talk about this tip, if you will, because I work on social media. However, working on social media and mindlessly consuming content on social media are two completely different things. What I have noticed is that when I scroll, just mindlessly scroll on social media, first I waste my time and second at the end of the scrolling I just feel empty. I feel this FOMO a lot because I have seen so many videos and pictures of people being happy and you know sharing their lives with the world and I am realizing that oh my god I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that and it's not doing my mental health any good. And social media has accelerated this FOMO phenomenon in several ways. It provides a situation in which you're comparing your regular life to the highlights of another person's life. 
Remember, the highlights. It is not the real life. The life people show on social media cannot be real and will never be real. Because first of all, they're not filming themselves 24-7. And second of all, a lot of people edit their content. It's absolutely normal nowadays to edit your pictures and your videos. So again, you're watching someone else's highlights not their real life. And because of that, your sense of normal becomes skewed and you seem to be doing worse than your peers. Social media creates a platform for bragging and it is where things, events, and even happiness itself seems to be in competition at times. So when you know that social media is usually something that triggers your FOMO, and usually, for a lot of people, it is social media. Stop spending so much time on social media. Be intentional about it. If you really do want to catch up on what your friends are doing, set a timer for yourself and stick to it. For example, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. But also, when you are consuming social media, notice the people who trigger you the most. And it is absolutely okay to unfollow them. Guys, we don't have to be following everyone nowadays. We don't have to be watching all the stories, liking all the posts. If some people are triggering you, stop following them. It's not worth it. But at the same time, I want you to be honest with yourself and think about this question. Why are those people triggering you? Because usually you will find the reason very deep down within yourself. And it's absolutely worth it because this way you will learn more about yourself. Maybe you're feeling jealous or envious, or maybe you think you want to have the exact same things that this person does because you don't know your goals and you don't know your priorities. So think about that. Once you you have all of those things written down, it's time to practice some gratitude. When I am experiencing a very strong sense of FOMO, I try to redirect my attention to the things I'm grateful for. And when you're fixating on all the things you're missing out, you're forgetting about all the wonderful things that you have in your life right now. Usually when this feeling of FOMO for me is extremely hard to cope with, I even start journaling. I don't just, you know, think about the things I'm grateful for, I actually write them down or even journal like a small entry. Your life is amazing and there are surely many things you're grateful for. So whip out your journal when it's really hard and write down three things you're grateful for. Focus on what you have rather than what you lack. And unfortunately, FOMO and social media are creating this sense of lacking with this us, that we're constantly lacking something. And that's why we have to constantly chase after something bigger, more important, something that will make us happier or so we think. That's why practicing gratitude and journaling will keep you grounded and focused on your life and your goals, not someone else's. And finally, I want to talk about JOMO. Do you know what it stands for? Joy of missing out instead of FOMO, fear of missing out. So it's all connected to embracing this fear of missing out on purpose. For example, at the beginning of the video, I talked about a concert I missed because I think I was sick and that's why I couldn't go. So I was experiencing FOMO and I was not happy about that. I really wanted to go to that concert because I knew it was something that I would enjoy a lot. That experience for the concert taught me one thing that sometimes I should experience FOMO intentionally. For example, when my friends are going out and I'm not really sure I wanna go, I will intentionally miss out on this opportunity and stay home. I will embrace this idea of JOMO and savor the freedom it brings. For me, staying in and disconnecting from the outside world is definitely a form of self-care. I think when I intentionally choose to miss out on certain things, it makes me a stronger and more resilient person. He makes me realize that not attending a concert or not buying a pair of sneakers I really wanted to get 
is not the end of the world. Because when I look at my long-term goals, well, yeah, maybe attending that concert was one of those. But at the same time, I can attend a similar concert in the future. So being strategic is important because it allows you to take control of your life and realize that worrying about an event you didn't attend is not the end of the world. And plus, if you really wanted to go there, it's all in your power, in your control to attend the same event or a similar event in the future. Again, stop putting the responsibility for your life on someone else. It's your life and you're responsible for your own actions and for your own choices. Someone else who got a new house or a new car and who is posting pictures about it online and who is triggering you this way is only showing you your qualities you have to work on. It is not personal and it has nothing to do with them. They can do whatever they want online. Guys, we live in the 21st century. People are doing whatever they're doing online and no one cares. So stop caring. Stop living your life through the lens of someone else's and start living it the way you want to and the way you aspire to. So that's how I deal with FOMO and I hope this video will help you work through the fear of missing out when you're experiencing it. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.